a progress update and I have uh, quite clearly got ahead of myself because got almost prepared, you know, got my Agadaga gun to actually put the jaw grips back but I haven't cleaned the main body, haven't even like give it any proper thought but fortunately I'm not that impatient, uh, stuff can wait and uh, as a progress update, so yeah, spent a couple of hours today working on the jaw grips, those pieces, uh, which were pretty rusty, uh, pretty blackish, and uh, I'm not claiming they are perfect, they aren't, and honestly, they shouldn't be perfect, I mean, if they were to look like, you know, like store-bought, completely new of some factory in China, I wouldn't be happy, I mean, this is... Uh, at least like a half a century thing, it should have some witness marks, but uh, you know, it should look as it has been given some care, and I think I've gave it enough care, as you can see, it's shiny, and it wasn't uh, almost at all before, so that was, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually kind of cool, and uh, you know, I don't think I fully understand uh, how all of that works, but basically what I've done with those is like obviously taking them off uh, the jaws I've tried to you know like uh, scrub them with a wire brush It's like the usually a good first step then clean them with uh, acetone you know degreasing etc etc and then the actual chemistry so I have a thing that's uh, at least here in Poland called fossil I think it's mainly like uh, phosphoric acid, the orthophosphoric acid, you know, the stuff you have in Coca-Cola. Just, you know, like a nicer formulation. And it's marketed and sold exactly as a the raster, like rust remover for steel and iron castings. So it does its job quite well. And... Uh, yeah, I don't think we have evaporas or at least, I mean, I'm in Europe, Central Europe, you know, European Union, yay! Um, I have not seen, like, evaporas being, like, easily available. I'm sure if I, like, put my time and skills to it, you know, like, I can get anything, anywhere, etc., etc. Still, uh, like, 20 minutes bath, and after the bath, it doesn't, obviously, look shiny, it mostly looks black, actually. But then, uh, generous application of uh, hand sanding, and what I usually do, I have like this made this like board that you know it's um, it's like a cutting board from IKEA again, like some super cheap base, and then I have just places where I like uh, double sided tape uh, adhere uh, those uh, sanding papers that I buy in rolls. So like the first pass is like. 220 or 240 uh, grit, I think, yeah, that's the that's the unit, not King's, fin King's Fingers Nails, sorry, the, the grit, 2020 or 2040, in any case, that's really not much of the difference, and that's what really, you know, like, removes the stuff, but I still do believe that you need the chemical phase just to, you know, like, because it already takes stuff off, you can see it bubbling, and you can see, like, um, I would assume iron oxide chunks like salts uh, forming in it so that's a really good step and for this you know like trying to get uh, well trying to do a good job and get a good result I've also gave both of those like the last pass with I think it was grid 1000 mostly because I didn't have and don't have anything like 7, 8, 600 in any case I'm really well happy yeah because these are good enough i mean they are not pristine but they are shiny and they weren't before so you know my squirrel brain is completely satisfied with those and yeah for the screws i mean you don't really see them i didn't do any sanding on them because like what would you be sanding your screws for i mean you don't want to damage the threads but they were in the same buff uh, of this like uh, phosphate stuff Phosphoric acid, yes. In any case, yeah, i pretty happy. And uh, yeah, I have also been working on the handle. But that will have to be a second segment. 
we have the second segment. And yeah, I mean, honestly, this is the handle. The two is a second, uh, well, it's in the second pass of trying to uh, glue it together. But, you know, glue, I do not like glue and uh, a lot of people agree with me. But then again, we use it anyways, because it is extremely useful. Um, this case here is... Uh, Trying to use some very, very, very honestly Chinese uh, stuff that's uh, supposed to be rubber-like and probably not even exactly permanent. I'm not really as happy as I thought I would be, but I've started with this idea, so this is like a second pass, because it has already been glued like inside and on the other side of it, which I will not be showing you, because this is relatively fresh uh, glue and it will flow. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing, I have not enough experience with it to, you know, like be fully confident about what I'm doing. So, kind of a learning situation here. In any case, the idea is, uh, well, let me grab the, uh, the second one, yeah. So, the uh, bar, rod, ends. Yeah, I remember I did say I wanted to do something out of metal, but the metal ends I had, they were actually like a like silly drawer pull thingies uh, actually after you know, like seeing them in scale with the rod it didn't make much sense to use them because it will be just like overly comically long and not practical and the original end caps were plastic they were sticking out a little bit more this side but not as much as the metal stuff so i found those i think these were like a plastic fit for something or other in any case, got exactly a pair of them, which is, I guess, you know, you have to sometimes go with uh, how the reality around you just happens to be. You found two of these. I had two other candidates which were like a rubber feet, and I've got plenty of them. And these being two, and you know, just like, I think they, you know, they are black, matching the general theme. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. The idea is for this to finally set, which probably, like, Judging by the current progress, it's gonna take like five days, and then it's probably gonna. Well, I'm not gonna say that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. In any case, yeah, just like when you're doing this kind of stuff, please uh, remember this. Uh, I know quite an obvious thing, but you can make mistakes in that department too. That you only glue or like attach the one side, because then you have to put it through the thing where it's supposed to be, and only then you can attach the other side <laughs> because. I know it's stupid, but you know, we're all idiots from time to time. So, so yeah. And if you're wondering about the holding solution, well, guess what? That's another completed project from whenever. And it's kind of funny because I was thinking about making a video about this one and another one because, you know, the relationships between projects. But I haven't yet, so it's still open. I mean, if you know what all of this stuff is, then you know, and most people will have absolutely no idea what they are looking at, except that it is actually quite useful. And, uh, yeah, so... Yoski, another day, another progress update. As you can see, I have my vise in two pieces, the moving jaw and the static jaw and the uh, holding uh, part of it, uh, and it's also upside down because that's apparently the only orientation where it just uh, sits on its own. So, progress update, let's start with a thing that I've done, I think, already two days ago, just uh, failed to mention it. So, as I was saying, um, this uh, shaft, which actually, you know, like, moves the jaw, this hole here was rather nasty here, you know, just uh, no debarring whatsoever. So, I've addressed that, I used the Dremel and, like, uh, uh, those sort of, uh, I think they are like tungsten something something uh, uh, tips, best basically for uh, grinding, and yeah, it's. Uh, I think it actually went pretty nice. So you know, it's uh, really soft, and also some sanding paper. I think some like much higher grit, like a thousand or five hundred, just you know, like to make it nice. So yeah, that's done. No more attention needed here. Now, as for today's cleanup, uh, this side here. Again, I mean, I'm not, you know, gonna bother making this extra shiny or anything. So, no chemistry here. Just uh, 
to sanding, uh, bricks, sponges, whatever you call them. 150 grit for the first pass and 220 for the second pass. Uh, just to clean it up, you know, while I'm here. So yeah, this part, I guess, good enough. Now, this stuff, the main thing I wanted to address was this. Again, same deal, no chemistry, just the two sanding sponges. It's not extra shiny, but it's not rusted anymore. And that was the point. And the same thing like on the slot for the grips. And in terms of cleaning, you know, I've actually didn't do any sort of degreasing or like any involved, let's call it like that, cleaning, just a cloth, uh, some like uh, basic detergent, just, you know, just in case it wasn't really that dirty, so. So yeah, I guess it's now, no, it's not yet the time to work. So as for this little bit of rust here, I have decided to simply ignore that. Why? Because this is at the end of the thread here, so it's not like you're actually, you know, depending on it, because the only time when you would kind of maybe had a chance to depend on it is if you were like using it like on some very, very thick uh, board or whatever, which is not my use case. And then again, these are threads. So, you know, it's like, I think it's better to have working but rusted thread than a clean and shiny non-working thread. That's basically my thinking here. And I'm gonna be putting the graphite grease on this anyways. So that should like help protect it into the future. Uh, as, uh, let's say, a tangent. So I guess a good tangent here is that, you know, having taken this thing apart, I have noticed things that you normally do not see when just using it is that there is a lot of set screws in uh, strategic places, let's call it like that. So that's the magic that actually, you know, keeps this thing together. Yeah, I have another one, yeah, yeah. another one here. So yeah, I mean, and another one here. So this is the stuff that you do not notice and especially not like the stuff on the bottom of the thing. So yeah, it's an interesting construction and uh, I still have no idea how this, this uh, pipe thing threaded on the inside is actually attached on this side. Maybe it's something to do with this set screw. Maybe if you know, like I were to take this off this part, I would have some insight into how this is actually held in place. But yeah, I am not gonna be, or oh, basically, you know, I'm gonna be following the prime directive and the prime directive uh, is that if it ain't broke, do not fix it. So that's also the reason why I'm not touching, like not degreasing it. I mean, again, the only thing really broken is the handlebar here which is not done, this uh, weird Chinese glue is still curing, setting, I don't know, doing jolly stuff and enjoying itself, and it's not ready. Though on that tangent to tangent, I am actually starting to think that what I have is not actually a glue, uh, you know, as an adhesive, it's more like a liquid seal. So, you know, you kind of look, if you look at it from that perspective, maybe the fact that it's still sort of liquid and moving is actually a good thing. Uh, in any case, I believe that's all plus tangents about the current status update. And I think I will shut up now and uh, actually try to do some work on camera. Uh, basically, I want to put my grips on because I think they're fine and actually put it back together and have it in one piece. And at that point it won't be, you know, extra greasy, do not touch, sort of a eh, yuck thing. So yeah, let me get on to that. I will even try to do it on camera. Okay. And some copper grease, you know, just as an anti-seizing, <coughs> apologies, little helper.
Yeah, and I have no idea exactly how much should I be putting. It's probably too much already, but hey. I don't think there's any possibility of this making any of this any worse and I'm already missing a third hand. I'm also trying not to grease everything around me. Yuck! In any case... So far, so good. Okay. Nice and shiny. Okay. And I am greased. Okay, now for the fun part of actually putting this back together. <sighs> I think there was a trick to this. Yeah. You know, that's why you have a handle, so you know, don't, need, don't need to do this. Okay, and the last order for today, more grease. Oops. Okay. Which way do I want to start? I'll probably do like both sides. I don't feel any that much. I already smoke it.
And yeah, yes, of course, there's a trade of, I mean, now it's greased, so it's gonna catch on like uh, dust and dead and I'm gonna have to clean it up here, but it makes it operate much smoother and I would say even with uh, some dust, it's still generally speaking better for the threads. And it also like uh, makes you aware of uh, not sticking your finger into the threads, etc. Just you know, have the handle thing for operating that, so there's really no reason for sticking your finger into the threads. for the rusted part. Let's try to smoosh it on that side. Okay, that's more than enough. Final cleanup, and uh, we're done. Just awaiting the only thing that's actually broken. Amazing, isn't it? It's always like that. And we're done here.
Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.